A food hack is one of two things. It's either the worst thing ever invented in humanity in a complete and utter lie, or it's so time-saving that it revolutionizes your cooking or eating forever. Yeah, sure, they're fun to watch, but are they even useful? So today we are going to TikTok to find the most viral food hacks, and we're gonna put them to the test to see if they even work in the first place. Now look, I know my opinions can be harsh. Worked my whole life in restaurants, mostly fine dining. Things are pretty specific and not always very nice in those worlds. But today, I'm gonna be a little nicer. Emphasis on only a little bit. I really am hopeful that some of these are actually good and effective. I want people to learn at the end of the day, but I also want people to know the truth. So let's give it our best effort, starting with number one using an onion ring as a ring mold. This is an affordable and edible alternative, so I do like it. Pan over medium heat, onion goes in. I've got some oil already in there. Get, let that onion start cooking. I think you should salt the onion a little bit. I think that's nice. Take our egg, a little salt. Pop a little lid on that bad boy. Here comes the bride. Ooh, all fat and wide, damn. I will say, if the onion ring was a little bigger, it would have held it together. So all things considered, we got a cooked egg. It's actually kind of badass. You could put this on a sandwich with some bacon and cheese. I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. Does your bread do this? Supposedly you can bring it back by taking to the sink and you just kind of give it a little one of those. This can't be good. Supposedly it goes in the oven straight up. All right, it's out. I have some thoughts on this. Heating up stale bread in the oven, especially if it's wrapped in something like foil, will almost always bring it back to life depending on how stale it is. That said, if it's really stale, the water might actually help. And I was surprised to see that the crust was still kept crisp. It's actually quite nice. Thumbs up. Supposedly you got cracked eggs in a bowl. Maybe you get a little shell in there. That happens. Ha! Is wet fingers. We'll get it out. I've always used the shell. I did not know this. I could see this being true. It works. I did not know that. It's not even like an internet hack. That's a life hack. Thumbs up. Supposedly you can use an apple slicer to get potato wedges. Oh boy, this is scary. If your apple slicer has enough sharpness, you might get better shaped wedges. These are but what I should point out is whenever you do this, you will also end up with this. What do you do with this? Do you also bake this so all of them you have wedges except you have one phallic one for every potato? Or do you throw this away? Because that's just wasteful. Did you know that if you just used literally a knife, you can get both a cut apple and potato wedges and millions of other options. And this is hard to use. I had to apply a lot of force with this. So if you can do this, you can use this. It might be useful for some. So I'll give it a 50-50. Hard boiled egg peeling by blowing it. This is one of the worst hacks I've ever seen, but if it works, I will be amazed. So little hole on the top, and then on the bottom, we're gonna make a big hole. And I just blow on this. No fucking way. It cracked a little on impact, but I mean, if it worked once, can it work twice? That's crazy. When you do this, it will crack the egg. So if you want a perfectly intact egg, you probably won't get one. Secondarily, I don't want your hot breath all over my hard boiled eggs. So please don't do this for your guests and just peel them by hand because that is gross and unsanitary. But if it's just for you, I mean, if it works, it works. In between mid and good, it's like right here. I picked a lot of herbs in my day. If you ever worked in a restaurant, you probably have also picked a lot of herbs. It's very annoying. So supposedly using a box grater speeds up the process. Let's try it. You just take a stem of your herbs, push the stem through here. Did I do that right? I mean, it literally just gave me more stems. I'm really trying here. I don't just do this to make it suck. I want these to work. I really do. People are like, oh, you're supposed to do it like this. And I'm like, you know how long I've been cooking? I've been cooking my entire life. If it is this difficult for me to understand it, do you think other people are gonna figure it out? That kind of worked. If you put more herbs, you get them picked. What I will say is they end up bruised and some of them don't fully get picked. I don't know who this helps. I feel like it's just as fast as just pull, pull. The amount of time that this took for me to figure out, I could have already had herbs picked. I don't see this reducing any friction in anyone's life. If you like it, let us know, but I'm not a fan of it. I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. I've actually seen this before. This has been around for a while. Supposedly a cup can peel a mango. These are things I have a hard time feeling good about, but I can't help but want to know, does it actually work? The funny thing is you do need a knife to get this part started. You already have the tool that you need to do this. So you get a mango cheek. You just get the cup, you get it lined up. With... I knew this wasn't gonna work. So you line it up. Oh, wait, wait. It didn't really work that well. Second try. I really don't want to rip the skin, so I'm gonna go real slow. Maybe if I start a little higher up. There, hey, I mean, you're likely gonna end up with more waste doing this, but if this makes your life easier, it makes your life easier. It did work. I can't say it didn't work. We got peeled mangoes. So, little bit of waste. Try to be careful with it. Maybe just suck on these so you don't waste that. I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. Not bad. I don't think I'll ever use this again because I like the technique of using a knife, but that's just me.
Reheating cold pizza. In my opinion, this is sacrilegious. Just literally eat it cold. It's so good cold. But if you want it hot, the problem is you microwave it, it goes too soft. What are you gonna do, boil it? Putting it in the oven, it kind of dries out. So what's the perfect way to eat it? Supposedly, a hot pan. Now, bottom of the pizza in a pan that's been set over medium heat. So pan is hot and supposedly you take an ice cube, whatever that's for, that goes next to the pizza and then you lid it. And I guess we wait for three to five minutes. You got it. All right, let's check it. Top is gooey, all right, take it out. First thing I'm noticing is that the top of the crust is completely soft, not crisp, but what is there to be said about the bottom? Pizza's heated through. I get what they did. This is basically the pot sticker mentality. What is that, you might ask? Well, if you've never made pot stickers, you make contact with the pan and it's searing. It's essentially crispifying on the bottom. You add the ice, create steam. You could also probably just add water, honestly, just like you do with a pot sticker that cooks the top while the bottom stays crispy. It makes sense. It's not a perfect method though, because the crust is still completely soft, like as if you were to microwave it. But is it better than a microwave? Yes. Is this better than heating in any other way? Possibly. In comparison to an oven, not that much better. So I would say I'd give it a mid. This one is interesting. You ever bread something with a three tier setup? And I'm talking flour, egg, and a breadcrumb. Usually you need three bowls, but what if you could do it with just a sheet tray and foil? I like it, but we'll see if it works without them mixing together. So you got a sheet tray, layer of foil, goes down, make a nice wall. I'm gonna do another layer just so that it's totally coating the surface. So we're gonna make three sections. I'm not sure if this wall is gonna hold up. Section two and section three, which is a little skinny. That's my mistake. I mean, I feel like this is gonna work. Flour into one, breadcrumbs into another egg wash. I mean, it's holding it. This is kind of a typical expectation of the simple fact that aluminum foil can be whatever you want it to be. That's what I'm learning here. If you were to bread, this would work. You can bread into your flour, your egg wash, your panko, and then when you're done, you just throw the foil away and your sheet tray is clean. I like this one. I actually might start using this technique. I'm gonna give this a thumbs up. Supposedly you can roast garlic in five minutes in the microwave. So cut off a little bit of the head that then goes into a ramekin. So we're gonna fill this up about halfway with water. I mean, this is just boiling it. Little olive oil on top, 40% power, five minutes. See you then. Wow. Let me just say something. No. The benefit to roasting garlic is not just that it gets soft, is that you slowly achieve caramelization. I want you to take a look at this and tell me if you think this is caramelized. Let's see if it's soft. It's not. I'm sure if you let this in long enough, it would be soft. Here's the hack. Take all these cloves out, submerge it in oil, low heat for like two to three minutes, and you will have essentially spreadable roasted caramelized garlic. That's also called confit. This is done. Thumbs down. Supposedly you can use a hair straightener to open a bottle of wine. Let me just do a data research real quick. So from Walmart, you can get a wing wine corkscrew for $3.23. This costs around $20. If it works and you don't have one of those, maybe this is a helpful thing. You just do this. There's no way this is gonna work. I have this turned on to the maximum temperature, which is 410 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been over five minutes. Nothing at all has happened. Supposedly this lady said it could take up to 15 minutes. So I guess we'll wait the full 15 to really test this out. Okay, 15 minutes later, nothing has happened. This is a stupid hack. Go buy a wine opener on Amazon or wherever you buy stuff. You don't even need to do any of this stuff. Just go buy one right now. That's a thumbs down. The real hack is being prepared. Not everyone has a vacuum sealer. How do you vacuum seal something without that? Ziploc bag and a bowl of soon to be water. All right, so I got some butter here. Maybe I wanna preserve this butter for longer. You got your item in the bag. You close it until it's almost closed. You're gonna finish closing that after you've fully submerged this in water. Once the water is as high to the seal as possible, you'll then close it all the way. There we go. It's never gonna be as powerful as a typical vacuum sealer, but you could use this for sous vide and it helps preserve things longer. So I'll give this hack a thumbs up. Okay, the overhead fan turned on because it's getting hot in here, pal. No, it actually is a really annoying trait that this thing has. If it reaches a certain temperature up here, fan turns on and we can't turn it off, but it will turn off eventually, hopefully. So fried chicken. I'm actually excited to try this technique. I don't think it's dumb. I've just never heard of it, but basically you dip breaded chicken real quickly in water and then fry it. Supposedly it makes it crispier and it has less oil sputtering. I feel like it's gonna have more oil sputtering. So I'm going to turn the fire off so that we survive this shoot, okay? First, we're gonna go in with the undunked chicken. This is just lightly marinated, lightly breaded, fried straight up, okay? So we can see how that's frying. Looks like that. So number one, not sputtering that bad. So that's already debunked, but will it be crispier? We'll see. So you just full dunk real quick and take it out. All right, it. Cool, that just washed off all the batter. Let's see if it sputters less. 
quite literally no. Do not do this. So this is the non-dunked, and this is the dunked. Clearly a lot less color. Season these with salt. The one that was dunked has significantly less color. It is more breaded than I thought it would be. Is it cooked through? Yes. We'll let it rest, and then we'll taste it. Okay, the moment of truth. So we'll start with the properly fried chicken. As expected, crunchy, juicy, salty, delicious. This is great. Now for the dunked chicken. Cheers. The bite on it was crunchier. Maybe there were a few benefits. Surprisingly, some areas are more crunchy, but the underside was not breaded because it got washed off and it did sputter more when it went in the oil. Typically, that would give it a thumbs down, but because there were some hidden benefits, granted, I won't be doing this again for me personally, I'll give it a 50-50. It kind of works. Try it for yourself, just be careful. Supposedly, microwaving citrus will get you more juice. I'm gonna try to get these slices as similar in weight as possible. They weigh the same, relatively even in size, so we will microwave one. They say to microwave it for 30 seconds. So to maximize the juice out of this, I'm gonna use a spoon just to point out that you can max juice out without just squeezing it. That feels pretty juiced. The non-microwave citrus gave us 26 grams. So let's try the microwave. That is so hot. How the f do I juice this? I would consider this juiced. 18 grams. We literally got almost half the amount of juice. Citrus juice is very delicate. There's a lot of really special flavors in it. Now cooking it changes the flavor. Raw citrus, light, fragrant. Cooked citrus, you lose flavor and you end up with more of like a caramelized flavor, which you don't always want. This is just a net loss all over. Thumbs down. You can apparently peel this with this. So you take a little piece of tin foil, crunch it up, and then you uh, rub this. Ah! I hate this hack. This isn't that dissimilar to how you would peel a carrot in a nice restaurant. Whenever you get those perfectly smooth carrots, they take a piece of Scotch Bright scouring pad, for example, and they rub the carrot and you get a really smooth carrot. If you rinse this carrot, you will see that it is essentially peeled. You can do the same thing with a scouring pad. You can do the same thing with a peeler. Now, I'll give this a thumbs up with a caveat. I feel like this is somehow unhealthy. Maybe rubbing your carrots with aluminum foil is not good for you. I don't know. No, I'm not a scientist. I personally would not, but it worked, so it's a thumbs up. Supposedly you get a perfectly circular fried egg by rubbing garlic on the pan. That sounds like a load of horse shit. We're gonna find out, but as a substitute, you could just use a ring mold. You kind of draw a circle. So I'm gonna crack the egg right in the center. It's not a perfect circle, but it did stop. Did that just work? I wonder if it's just the pan. So this technically worked. We'll do another version without the garlic and see if it does the same thing. Here we go. Ooh. It was the pan. We cleaned the pan completely with soap and water, got the garlic out, it basically did the same thing. And I will say, the egg that we put in there was not perfectly circular. So, some may say thumbs up, I say thumbs down. Chopstick, a lemon, and you just poke a hole in it. Work that hole out, and uh, it should juice, so here we go. It is juicing. Whoa, oh my God, <laughs> sorry. Here's the thing, it worked, it got juice absolutely everywhere. I wanna see if there's still juice left in this lemon, because I've squeezed it to its max. So you wasted about 25% juice with this method for the sake of convenience. Ah. This requires a lot of arm strength first off. With wastefulness, I'm gonna say that's a solid thumbs down. This is a butter softening hack. We have a cup that is running under hot water, very hot water. This hurts. You're gonna pour that out and you're just gonna do this. Now, normally softening butter takes 30 minutes to an hour. Supposedly this takes five minutes. So we start the clock. Okay, it's been five minutes. This should be softened. It's not, like at all, it's actually still cold. Softened butter would be room temperature, which should be anywhere around 70 to 75 degrees. That is 48 degrees. Uh, that did not work. It's still better than waiting 30 minutes. I feel like if you waited longer, it would probably work. So I'll give it a 50-50. You might be wondering what I'm doing. Supposedly this hack will give you two bags out of one. So the key is to get your knife very hot and you just cut a bag in half and it should give you two bags that are sealed, supposedly. Oh shit, actually, wait, hold on. No way. Oh, there's a little leak. It sort of worked. I don't think that this is that practical and if you pull hard enough, it will open. And the side that is sealed properly kind of doesn't. Mid. Pitting a cherry with the chopstick. I'm skeptical of this one. I don't like single use tools, but I will say a cherry pitter is useful. Hopefully this works. Stem off. Supposedly you just press it through the center. Perfect, that did not work at all. Thank you very much. There's no further testing. The pit did not come out. Supposedly the hack is you can juice a lemon using kitchen tongs. But I thought that you take the tongs and do that. It turns out you use this end and squeeze. You're just squeezing a lemon. It works. I kind of like it. It's like less aggressive than squeezing with your hand. But you want to know what else you could do? You could juice a lemon with anything. Take this offset spatula, for example. What about a spoon? Tweezers. The point I'm trying to make is that anything that will break up the flesh of a lemon will juice the lemon. This will juice the lemon without making as much of a mess. So it's a thumbs up. Supposedly you can use a fork to remove chicken tendons. 
So we have a deboned chicken leg quarter. You got lots of little white tendons here, like quite a lot actually. And these are very annoying to remove. So supposedly, paper towel, you put the tendon in between the fork tine. Try this with a strong hand. It kind of worked. Let's see if it does it again. Some of these don't even usually come out with tweezers. I mean, here's my general thoughts. You do waste a little meat, but you waste less, which I do enjoy. This is a great hack. I actually might end up using this. Thumbs up. All right, I don't know what this is about. Supposedly a Pringles can and a watermelon. Oh, f <laughs> what do you do with the rest of the watermelon meat after that? You just have a hole in your watermelon. That's just wasteful. I'm not doing this. Let me show you the right way to cut a watermelon. A lot of people like to buy watermelon tools. And if you have to buy one, that's fine. But you have a knife, you can cut a watermelon. Cut off both root ends, flat side down. Pick whichever one you want. Knife. And then you just carefully and slowly cut around the watermelon, okay? Might not be perfect. The first cut is usually the hardest because you're trying to figure out where that flesh is, right? Sometimes the white of the watermelon is thicker than usual. The first cut right, and then the other ones will follow. You're gonna go all the way around. Wow, look at that. There's a little waste sometimes. That's okay. The point is you save way more watermelon. You can cut it into rounds or my preferred way, cubes. You see, I get not everybody's going to be able to use a knife. I get not everybody's going to be able to buy a tool, but with the waste that's going to come from this, I'm not a fan of it. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. I don't know why you would do this, but cutting cake with floss. This is mint. Maybe we should get unflavored next time. Well, I already cut a triangle out of this, so I'm gonna try and make more triangles out of it. Oh, look at that. Didn't get all the way to the bottom. That's lovely. Um, That's a thumbs down. Thank you very much. That's fucking stupid. Use a knife. Vikram brought me his fucked up pan, and we're gonna supposedly fix it with baking soda, a lemon, and a little bit of white vinegar. Supposedly the baking soda goes in the pan. You just throw the lemon in there, I guess. You turn it on and you put some vinegar in there. You bring it to a boil. I think this is horse shit. And then you scrub it with the lemon. I mean, some of it's coming off. I still don't understand the purpose of the lemon other than the fact that it smells kind of good. Let's check to see the results. It's the same. To be honest, it did clean some of it out. I'm sure this would work on a pan that wasn't as messed up. Sometimes harsh chemicals just work better. I'll give it a mid. A muffin tin. Now, what would you use this for? Muffins, right? No. Now you can easily assemble tacos. I'll tell you one thing, if you pull up to Oaxaca and you're doing something like this, you better expect a chancla flying somewhere. This could help some people. I think it's incredibly dumb. I guess this works for hard shell, so. Does it work? It does. Do I like it? No. So I'm gonna give it mid, but it does work. You can cut an apple in half with just your hands. I guess if you wanna share this with someone, you could be like, oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> Here you go. How about you just eat the damn apple? If you don't have a knife, so what? I bet you I could karate chop this in half, Vikram. Worked. See how fucking stupid that is? If someone's like, hey, can I have a quarter of that apple? And you karate chop it in half? I don't know, use a spoon, a pair of scissors. How about a really long chopstick? I don't know. What do I do with the technique? Because in any other scenario, you just eat the apple. Just eat it. If you don't get that, go to therapy today. Thumbs up. Supposedly you can hull a strawberry with a straw. I don't know if there's some sort of a joke in there. Look, you poke it through and then supposedly, I don't see what that did. I mean, it does work, but I don't know. You wanna know the alternative to this? Use your fingers and do that and eat the strawberry. You can eat the butt. It's not gonna hurt you because of the, how you have to hold it. It's not making it easier for anyone. I'm gonna give this a thumbs down. Plastic wrap. Supposedly, if you put it in the freezer, it will not stick to itself, which makes it easier to use. It does feel different. All right, here we go. It works for about 50 seconds, so I see what's happening. Because this is cold, when it comes out, it gets a slight amount of condensation on the outside, and water prevents things from sticking together because it's wet. As soon as that dries up and this comes to room temperature, which takes about a fraction of a second, it immediately returns to its original properties. Does this work? Sorta, kinda, not really. I guess if you wanna keep your plastic wrap in the freezer, it might help you a little bit. I'll give it mid. Okay, so they're calling this the reverse strain. You take a strainer, and instead of pouring your pasta through the strainer, or colander rather, you put the colander in your pot, and then drain. To me, this isn't really a hack. This is just smart. Kind of chefy. You got your pasta still in the pot. You can sauce it, toss it, etc. Just do me a favor and reserve some of that pasta water. I like it. It's smart. It's thoughtful. And with this being our last one, you know what? I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. So thank you, subscribe, goodbye.